Hi, everybody. Hey, welcome to another uh, live. Hope you're all doing well. Just I just popped in from the garden. It uh, It's a nice day here. It's not supposed to be too hot, but then it got very cold and uh, kind of slowed things down a little. But we were able to get uh, a bed and a half planted, and that feels great just to empty some cells out and know that things will be much bigger within the next couple of weeks. So, so good to see you all. Hi, Robin and Pauline and Mel. I'm going to talk about a lovely little package I got from you this week. Uh, Robert, uh, let me see. Allotted Chef, good to see you. Uh, CPU Things, also good to see both of you. Uh, let's see, Leanne is here. Oh, Marjorie, welcome. Uh, I love that you're watching from work. I totally applaud that behavior. And uh, let's see, what we have Willow Grove. Oh, that's one of my, you know, that's one of my favorite names. Uh, Mags is here and Anna. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, we are going to talk about interplanting today. That's going to be kind of the uh, topic of choice for the day. Thank you for several of you who uh, answered my little poll. And uh, so we're going to be talking in the weeks to come about uh, irrigation. And we're going to be talking a little bit more about flowers as well. It's going to kind of come into our interplanting a little bit, but I think uh, pollinators kind of deserve uh, a night of their own. So hello, Jace. Let's see. Beatrice, let's grow home. Thank you for being here. Hello, William from Scotland. Good to see you. Uh, Stephen. Always nice to have you in from Minnesota. Uh, and Mags, I don't think I said hi to Mags. So good to have you here. So I got a package this week from Mel uh, at Veg and Flowers. And she sent me seven types of seed. And I got to tell you, mo other than Colette's, uh, I don't know that I've seen any of these. Uh, I'm going to put my glasses on here for a second so I can actually read these. <laughs> but I, I do want to thank you so much, Mel. That was so kind of you to send me. This is a kale mix. Uh, a Moulin Rouge beetroot, which I've never grown that one. A nine-star broccoli, never grown that one either. I'm not even sure what nine-star broccoli is. Asturian cabbage, have not done that one. Now, tree spinach, uh, this must be a UK thing because I've never actually even heard of this. So, uh, and filter kraut cabbage and greyhound. Now, greyhound, I, I love greyhound. That's like one of my favorites. So thank you so much, uh, Mel. So, so appreciate that. And uh, I'm going to get some of these off so we can start growing them this year. Very excited about that. So today while we were outside, it almost like it was drizzling or, or threatening to drizzle. And then I'm, I'm telling you, there were snowflakes coming down. And then they were melting as soon as they hit the ground because it's only like 50 degrees out, but crazy. Uh, oh, Pauline just had some nine star broccoli. Okay. Hi, Mary. So glad to have you all the way from Australia. Lovely to have you. Uh, so anyway, so we're going to talk about interplanting. Interplanting, sorry. Uh, and I did a lot of that today while we were out there. Um, oh, I was listing uh, just now uh, seeds that Mel... Uh, Mel Beely had sent me 
uh, and they're ones that I only two I think I've grown before. So I'm very excited uh, to see what I get. I'm, I love new varieties. If you have followed me for any time or go to my website, you know that I do like to kick off just about every variety I can find. So uh, very excited about these. So uh, interplanting, I think it's one of the easiest ways to kind of maximize your growing space and keeping the weed pressure down. Because, you know, if something's growing in a space, a weed's not going to be able to grow there. So, you know, and it's better if you know companions that you can throw in a companion plant uh, so that where it's what it's next to, it's happy growing with. Um, so like today, we planted out bok choy, choy sum, uh, uh, we planted out some lettuces. I divided some shallots that came up from last year uh, that we obviously missed because there's a ton of them. Uh, more lettuce, some beetroot, some other things. So as, as we're planting, uh, although I do, I like to do things a little more aesthetically pleasing than just straight lines. Uh, so we mixed up the choy sum and the bok choy because one's purple, one's green. But then we put an onion. So if you picture a dice, a, a, like the five on a dice, full, one in each corner, and I put an onion like in the middle. And by the time the bok choy and the choy sum is done, I can let that onion grow to full size or I can pull it as a smaller onion and replant that whole section of bed. But what it does, I mean, the, the, the point of interplanting is that when, if you have long growing crops, you plant within those shorter growing crops so that they can be pulled out as the other ones grow to maturity, or you surround a, a, a longer growing crop with quicker growing crops so that they're out when the big one needs some room. So like, as I start planting cabbages and things um, in our big beds at the back, I'm gonna make sure to plant some quicker growing crops like spring onions, like uh, lettuces, like there's a lot, like beetroot will even be quick depending on how big you like to harvest them at. And sometimes it's about knowing like, okay, I can grow these beetroot to huge size or I can pull them as mini beetroots and they're as tender. You almost can just uh, put them in a salad. You don't really have to do much with them. So it takes just a little bit more planning, but uh, I, I'm going heavy on basil this year because we love basil year round. It's, it's something that we just use a lot. So I'm starting another almost flat of basil. So as I come into areas where I have empty spaces, I'm just going to pop a basil in there or pop some. I also got some onion sets this year. I've never grown an onion set. And I'm going to use those as fillers if I have a little space and I can I can pull them at any time uh, that I need them. So I think it's about thinking about what it is that you really enjoy having. Get a little, you know, whether or not you start from seed or you start, you buy starts, get a little extra of those or divide them. You know, you can always usually take a cutting from almost anything and put it, the stem in water and it will start roots uh, and fill in because I'd rather look at something pretty, you know, like a red, red basil, green basil is beautiful though. Uh, and look at that rather than thinking I have to, I have to weed that area. No, let's just put something in there. Uh, that we're going to enjoy having. 
And radishes are a great one. Like when you plant uh, parsnips, you can plant, you can easily plant quite a bit in between those, particularly if they have a short root. So you kind of got to go, okay, here's a parsnip. It's going to grow down. It's going to be in a bed for a very long time. But I could easily grow quick growing crops that are not root heavy. So anything that has um, a very shallow root system would would grow beautifully with um, parsnips. So even beans I've done, beans in between carrots, because the carrots are going to usually grow longer than a 50-day bean. So you kind of have to watch your timing with the varieties that you're growing. And, you know, like I put in broccoli rob today. That was the other piece that, because that's going to be up in 30 to 45 days. That's done. Uh, so it's easy to put a longer growing item uh, next to it. And by the time that one needs to mature, my broccoli rob will be out of there. Um, I also am doing a whole lot of interplanting with flowers this year. Uh, I started, when I started gardening, my first bigger garden was more of a potager style where everything just grew together um, and it was lovely. Uh, and I want to get back to that feel, even though I'm more in raised beds now than I was back in those days when I was 26 and could, you know, <laughs> yes, did not feel the need to have any raised beds. Um, <clears throat> I just intermingled flowers and uh, vegetables. And I even think vegetables are quite beautiful. So, um, I don't mind seeing a big head of red cabbage because I mean, it's, I think they're sculptural looking and they're beautiful and their leaves are gorgeous. So, um, yeah, so I, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to have on my website and I wanted to try to get it up before today, but it's not quite up. Um, I want to do a list of companion planting and some ideas for interplanting. And I will, I will put that on my website and I'll post it in the community tab when that's up. So if that's helpful, you can go look at that. But, and don't forget with your inner planting, you can also do edible flowers. Uh, I'm also growing more of those this year uh, because even just one on a salad looks beautiful. Even if you don't like the flavor of it, you don't actually eat it. Uh, it, it is beautiful for presentation anyway. Uh, but some of them, like a nasturtium, just adds a real peppery bite to things, which I kind of like. Uh, so have any of you uh, ever done interplanting uh, on purpose, if you know what I mean? I think, again, there's a little bit of planning uh, that goes into it. But what have you found that works really well together? Um, I also am trying to plant, I did have my first asparagus harvest just Monday. And that is about a month early for us. And I think it's because we had that little heat wave last week because it's uh, chilly again. Uh, but I think, um, so anyway, I had that, but I'm going to interplant my asparagus with spring strawberries, not ever bearing because you'll never get in after you leave the, you let the asparagus go to seed, but a nice spring crop of strawberries, I think would be lovely. And they're very happy together. Okay. Stephen is saying he's when I plant brassicas, since they are big above ground, I grow carrots and radishes around the brassicas to save space. Beautiful. And by the time your, your brassica is big, the carrots and radishes are out. So that's exactly the point. So you're using 
you're like making every square foot of your growing space uh, produce and produce more than you would normally if you don't interplant. Uh, Mary's saying she uh, interplants with alliums and marigolds. That's a great, you know, I would, I used to plant marigolds by my tomatoes and I found, I don't know if it was rabbits. It seemed like they popped the, the flowers right off the top of them. So I started planting basil and I'd put some onions in because so many uh, insects and things don't like the smell of onions. Maybe it's not insects. Maybe it's bunnies and stuff. Uh, and that seemed to deter a little bit of the insect pressure. Uh, yes. Uh, Mel is saying uh, her asparagus are new, so she will grow radish or some balcony tomatoes around them. I only have four crowns of asparagus. Lovely. Uh, and I think those will do absolutely wonderfully. Uh, let's see. I, I fill gaps with lettuce and radish, and I always interplant with marigolds and calendula. Lovely. And those are, I mean, calendula has a whole set of wonderful things that that offers uh, from, you know, it's healing properties on your skin and whatnot. Uh, yeah, that's wonderful. My, my calendula is not coming up very well. I'm having some germination issues with that one. Uh, Jace is saying I plant marigolds all over the plot just to attract bees and they look nice too. And they do, I think help. Um, there's a, a smell to marigolds that a whole lot of, and I'm not sure exactly what is really put off by, it might be rabbits. Um, but, uh, that, that smell kind of makes things not want to go there. Uh, the only thing I don't like about marigolds is you have to deadhead them. And um, I started growing more zinnias, but I don't think zinnias detract from anything, but they sure do attract pollinators. That's for sure. And they kind of take care of their own head deadheads most of the time. But yeah, I think, and they'll bush out. And the more you, the more you pull the heads or the uh, flowers, the more the bush and, become beautifully beautiful. Um, yeah, Mary, I, I calendula grows easily. For some reason, I'm having some germinations issues. Um, oh, I'm glad you left that. That's, that's true. And uh, I am kind of upping my uh, compost game this year. So, uh, I, I don't feel as bad about when I have to like lose a seedling. I used to be one of those people if I plant, because you overplant a little because you don't know if you're going to get full germination. And then I couldn't get rid of the second and third version of it. Uh, I'm now learning that, you know what? I'll, I will put this back in the compost and it will just go back into the earth and it will replenish uh, my growing space. So I'm getting a little more brutal or able to be a little more brutal um, with getting rid of seedlings and stuff. Uh, let's see, what have I missed? Oh, that's nice. I, I guess, um, yeah, I've heard that Kalenja will self-seed. And I guess I pull mine out. Maybe I should just wait and shake it over the ground before I pull them out. Um, oh, Alyssa. This is Robin's. Uh, Sweet Alyssa is supposed to be good to attract predator bugs. I plan to try this. Has anyone 
Um, now, uh, help me understand what you mean by predator bugs. Um, because I grew alyssum for the first time last year in many, 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 many years. And I felt like, I was like, why have I not had this in my garden every year? It's beautiful. It had a constant supply of bees flying around it. Uh, and it was hard, so tough. Got through the hot summer. In my head somewhere, I was thinking alyssum is a shade bearing. And I know it's, I mean, obviously now I know, but I think somehow I got that stuck in my brain. And I, now I have like, I don't know, 25, 30 plants of it starting because it was so beautiful. Yeah, if she meant pollinators, oh, they they attract aphid predators. Uh, aren't ladybugs an aphid aphid predator? I don't know what else eats aphids. I just know they totally like them. Um, but they were they were beautiful, and, and it I means it's awesome if they. We'll get rid of bugs we don't want. Uh, yeah, ladybugs. Because uh, they're so cute. Has anybody ever purchased ladybugs and let them loose in their garden? Uh, we used to have a... Well, we still have the friend. But when my daughters were little, uh, she would invite us over and we'd have a ladybug release party and she'd put the kids would wear little uh, gardening aprons and she'd put a bunch of ladybugs on it and then they could you know flip their little apron and the bugs would just fly and it was very fun but i always think oh how do you, yeah i guess you order them from like amazon or something which i think is amazing guess Amazon sells everything now. Um, let's see. J Jace is leaving some nettles, firewood, docks, et cetera, in an area to attract ladybirds. And ladybirds in the UK is the same as ladybugs, I think, for us uh, in the US. Um, I just thought, I thought it was a great little tradition and I've meant to do it uh, with my grandchildren, but they're not always here at the time when the ladybugs are available for purchase because they all live very far away from where I live. Uh, oh, a garden center brings them in. Didn't even think about that. Um, yeah, I, I haven't actually seen any ladybugs yet. But I guess it's still kind of early. We just started getting, I just saw a fly the other day and I thought, oh, we're getting, we're getting to summer. <laughs> uh, oh, so nettles attract ladybugs. I had no idea. Now, are let, nettles invasive? Are they like a spreading? Do they spread a lot? Um, or can they be kind of contained? Okay. All right. So let's let's get back. I know we get sidetracked. Let, let's get back to interplanting. So you kind of have to think about time of year, what's growing nicely, what will... Uh, like as we're, we're planting out today, it's it's we're still very into spring because although we're able to plant out now, and honestly, the sun is beautiful right now. It was not beautiful for us earlier, uh, but you you still have to be thinking seasonally what's what's going to grow right now the best. Plant things that take a lot of root with things that don't take a lot of root. Uh, think about when you 
Oh, hi, Jackie. So good to have you here. Um, so anyway, you want to think about roots, not roots, what grows uh, at the same time. Uh, let me think, what else are we thinking about? Size, you know, you got to think about the sun. Uh, so sometimes if you're growing a deep root, it will still get to the sun, even if you're growing it near something tall, because carrot carrot greens are also tall. So you can grow lettuce around that, even though they're, they might compete for sun for a minute, but the lettuce will come out uh, long before the carrot needs to. And I think you just kind of, it's also one of those things you kind of have to experiment with and see kind of what works well um, in your garden. But I'm going to go heavy, like I said, on basil this year, and I'm going heavy um, with onions to use as interplanting. Oh, and I was talking about flowers as interplanting. Um, I love nasturtiums for this because they are, first of all, they're very pretty, uh, but they're also very, pollinators love them. Again, they are an edible flower, so they work both ways. I also want to try uh, and let a couple of them go to seed so that I can, because uh, they call the seeds poor man's, uh, what are those little things called? Uh, la, 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 it's like little briny. Um, oh gosh, I'll think of it. But you pickle them like you do capers. Oh my goodness. You pickle them like you do a caper and they will translate into capers. So I want to try that. I've never done that. And I thought, well, let's give that a shot. And they're bigger, I think. So let's see we have i saw i missed a couple comments here one sec let me back up mary is saying that right now i'm planting my brassicas so i interplant chives onions spring onions garlic and herbs beautiful those will all love each they will they'll grow together uh very happily very happily uh, and Jackie's saying, I'm going to interplant more this year to make the most of space. Exactly. And it also is going to reduce how much you have to weed. That part really appeals to me because I, uh, I don't particularly like to weed. My husband will weed for me, which I do not, he likes it. Uh, and I'm happy for that. But um, she does like it. Oh, okay, you're we're talking to Mel, sorry. Uh, but really isn't right now, uh, potting on is like everything needs to be potted up. And uh, I mean, I have, I have flats of flowers that are dying to get potted up, but... I also had to take today and get outside and get some things in the ground because, you know, at this time of year, we're, we're out of space. And so I took a risk and I put a whole bunch in, but I think it will all, even if we drop down, I don't think we have another frost coming, but even if I, if it drops down, I think they will all take the chill just fine. Okay. We have a question. Do you rotate your beds so the same thing isn't growing two years in a row? I do not rotate my beds. Now that I know that's like controversial, but um, I I don't. First of all, I don't have an endless amount of beds, and sometimes things grow very well in one spot and don't go grow as well in the other. Uh, so. I just make sure uh, my 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 soil is healthy, that I take care of things. I don't let things rot in my soil, other than roots, unless it's a brassica. I do try to I do take those out just because of the club root issues. 
Uh, and I get those in my compost, but I don't, I don't leave those on the ground, but pretty much everything else, I just snip it off at the dirt, at the dirt level and let those rot over the winter and let them just at least add some more organic matter into my soil. Uh, yeah. So and I know some people like swear by it, but I also, I am a groupie of Charles Dowding and he does not rotate. And um, I think as long as you don't have something like a club root uh, or white rot that kind of lives in a bed, I, I don't know that you need to. But I do tend to throw a little lime when I'm plant. I, I, I side dress with lime uh, for my when I plant brassicas. But I only have two beds that really can contain uh, the brassicas because of hooping and everything else. So, yeah, I don't. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Okay, Beach Grove. I know that's a UK gardening channel. I do know that. Uh, okay, Mel is saying that she hasn't rotated a brassica bed for three years. I use lime every time in the hole. Yeah, I think there's ways to uh, combat that. You know, and like I said, you put it in the hole, I side dress. So I, I, I think... I think it's all about just keeping things really healthy. And if you see problems, then, you know, you've got to act accordingly, right? If so, if you can't grow onions or garlic because of white rot, then maybe you grow them in pots the next year with fresh soil. I mean, there's ways for us to get around uh, problems if they do arise. And there's also good ways like putting some lime when you're planting a brassica so that maybe you can proactively stave that off because you don't want that to become uh, part of your beds. Uh, Willow Grove is saying, I don't rotate crop crops either. If something's happy to grow where I plant it, then it goes in. <laughs> exactly. Now I do have two large beds behind my garage and I will, rotate and I won't I won't even call it rotate but one year I plant brassicas in bed A the next year I plant them in bread bed B but it's more because I like um variety then I think there's a problem Hi, Audrey, and everyone was listening while painting my fence. Lovely day here in Scotland. Oh, nice. I like to hear when Scotland has a lovely day. That's awesome. I never buy bread. So is that uh, really where the club root thing comes from? Is if you buy brassica plants? So if you start them from seed? Um Club root seems to be a bigger problem. Uh, okay, Jackie, lovely for you to stop in. It seems like, uh, yeah, that seems to be more of you. I don't know that I've ever had that, but I'm also thinking I don't want to get it. So I do pop in. Yeah, we do have a lot of Scottish viewers tonight. I love that. That's my heritage. If, for those who don't know, my parents were Scottish nationals. So uh, I essentially grew up in a Scottish home in the United States. So uh, yeah, that that's my that's my childhood. So uh, let's see what is what is on everybody's hit list right now aside from potting up getting in the garden starting new seeds uh <laughs> interplanting everything uh we can think of 
Oh, yeah. Jace is saying, if uh, if you get club root, you will have it for years. Yeah, so I kind of, based on what I have learned from my UK gardening friends, I stick some lime in with it. So, because I really don't want that. Um, okay, Leanne's saying she had it develop last year uh, with brassicas grown from seed. I have heard it does persist in the soil. And I think Jason uh, had just said it lasts for years if you get it. And it's hard to get rid of. I'm not sure how you um, eradicate that from the soil. I'm sure I maybe it's just a time. Uh, okay. Robin, all I'm going to say is good luck to you. Squirrel defenses. Uh, BB gun, perhaps. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. Squirrels are my nemesis here. So I'm with you. Uh, Mags is asking where in Scotland were my parents from? They both grew up in Glasgow. Uh, and I spent many, 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 many family vacations over there because that's where all of the family, except us, still lived. So we went over there many, many times. Beautiful country, Scotland. Uh, hi, Rob. Welcome. Uh, so lost my train of thought. We were, oh, we were talking about what is on our hit list. Uh, and Leanne said more time. That's how I felt today. I was out there from nine to two and it felt like we had just gotten outside. Uh, now we really did. We got a, a bed and a half taken care of, but just wasn't enough. Just was not enough time. Uh, Mary has been sowing seeds, working on uh, spring flowering bulbs. Uh, we'll be planting some of my garlic this week. And plant some topies too. Yeah. Now Mary's in Australia. So she's kind of the flip side of what we're doing. As we're going into spring here, she's going into fall. So yeah. I love I love garlic planting time. That always just seems like it's the beginning of the next season, but it's also kind of the end of this one. So I, it's bittersweet, but it's also ramping up for next year already. And uh, how is everybody's garlic from last summer doing? Uh, mine is, wow, it, you know, it wasn't coming up. It wasn't coming up. And all of a sudden, boom. Uh, that I think that little heat wave that we had really got a lot of things moving. Uh, so, well, Beatrice, I think... I think, uh, for me, seed sowing kind of almost goes on the whole year. I just change where I'm sowing them, right? Because if, you know, if you're sowing things like cilantro, uh, you got to plant that every two weeks if you want to keep a nice bunch going for the summer because that will bolt so quickly once the weather gets warm. So I think sowing is just part of like having a garden. So I would say don't feel behind. Just do what you can do. Uh, Jace is concentrating on protecting stuff from frost next week. Hardening. Yep. It is like the dance of the, the growing things, right? They go in, they go out. Uh, I was going to start hardening off some of my tomatoes or pepper plants today, but then it was so cold. And now I look out and I think there's full sun. They would love that. Uh, but I think that will wait till tomorrow. Uh, oh, Mags is from Glasgow too. 
Awesome. Yeah, my dad used to always tell us when we were kids that, you know, he used to walk uphill barefoot for miles to go to school. And, you know, we were spoiled because ours was only a mile away. Uh, and then, of course, he forgot that when we got older, we could drive in Scotland. And we timed how long of a walk he had. And it was way closer than our school. And it was not uphill. So I guess be careful what you tell your kids as you get older, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, Paul. And now, wow. Now, I wonder how garlic would rot in a cold snap. Maybe it had already started growing too much and then it got. Well, that's really sad because elephant garlic is. I just love it because it's very, very useful for a whole lot of other things. Um. Oh, and you know, having this discussion right now, and I say all this about garlic, I haven't fed my garlic yet. And that should have happened by now. Uh, I gave my garlic a feed about two weeks ago, and it's grown loads now. Yep. Uh, I try to, and I, uh, I can't believe I haven't done it yet. I try to give my garlic a feed every couple of weeks until... Uh, uh, when do I stop? Maybe after the scapes form, because then I know I'm about a month out and then I pull the fertilizer. Uh, but yeah, I meant to do that today. Maybe I'll get that done this afternoon. We'll see. Uh, oh, nice. Robin's Robin is positioned to get maybe 60 garlics. Yeah, all I'm going to say is never do what I did last year. 723 garlics. Yep. Insanity. Never do that again. Um, yeah, but it, you know, it was something to talk about anyway, as I was a first year uh, YouTuber at that point. Um, that was kind of fun to talk about when you apparently order things more than once. <laughs> so what do you do with it all? Uh, Mama's Oasis is saying that her garlic is doing well. Onions growing lovely too. Broad beans seem to be growing every day. Awesome. This time of year, particularly if you get, um, I mean, I have irrigation in my garden, but there's nothing like rainwater to after it rains it seems like the garden grows inches uh, there's just something about the natural rainwater that plants just love it's probably because there's absolutely no chlorine in it killing the things that maybe they really want um Okay, well, uh, I saw a cue. What do I feed my garlic with? Uh, I feed it with, uh, it's a, uh, well, first of all, it's an organic garlic feed that I purchase, but I think it's also heavy in calcium uh, and phosphorus i believe um but if not i would just be feeding it with even uh an organic fish and seaweed i would be putting something on it just to help it um bulb up a little bit and bulbing usually happens uh from the potassium that you put in the soil so, uh, yeah, and they do really, they really do bulk up better when you do that to your garlic. Um, okay, Mel is saying that she grows her garlic in pots at home. Beautiful. And they should do really well. Um, Mama's Oasis 
is saying this year, as it was so expensive, I planted the elephant garlic in the greenhouse. First time trying inside. Well, uh, I've never had a greenhouse, but I can't imagine. I mean, I think that would work great. Yeah, Leanne uses fish fertilizer. So yeah, if, if in doubt for something really specific, I spray my fish and seaweed fertilizer on everything because seaweed also has a lot of micronutrients in it. Uh, so it's kind of hard to go wrong. Now I just ran that up the wrong way. Here we go. Uh, Oh, Jace is saying they have downpours all day tomorrow. That's awesome. Now, I was getting a little irritated um, today because it kept sprinkling on and then stop. And then at one point, we thought it looked like snow was coming down. And I thought, I didn't know. But I would rather have, like, the downpour because that just saturates and makes everything so happy. Uh, Marjorie's asking uh, what to feed your garlic. Well, we were talking about if you don't want to get a specific fertilizer for it, I would just spray it with uh, fish and seafood, uh, which is a liquid that you can spray on. I do purchase a specific fertilizer, uh, an organic fertilizer for um, my garlic. Uh, but I also think it's good... I think a calcium, I think it's heavy in calcium and heavy in phosphorus. Uh, uh, let's see. Mm, what kind of fish fertilizer? Wait a minute. What kind of fish fertilizer to buy? Okay, and... I know that you're in the UK, so I'm not sure. Uh, maybe some UK uh, folks can help. We have one. It's, I think, from Neptune. It's, I know I can see the bottle in my, in my head. And it's just organic fish and seafood fertilizer. And it's a concentrate, so you add it to a gallon of water and then can water any, I mean, I water everything with that at least once a month in my garden just to kind of give it a little kick. Um, but things, you know, things that are, are going into, uh, into fruit, I watch my fertilizing when things begin to fruit because sometimes that can really jack with the fruiting uh, process. Uh, Yes, and you're correct, Mary, that um, weeds, well, weeds always grow faster than edibles, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, they just tend to do that anyway. Okay, yeah, I there is a, yeah, fish blood and bone, I've heard of that. Um, yeah, we don't have that over here specifically. So, uh, yeah, I think, and I think those of you that are near the coasts, I sometimes watch, I shouldn't say sometimes, I watch Tony C. Smith and he is right by the North Sea and there's seaweed everywhere. And I think, Wow, that Neptune's harvest. Yes, thank you. Yes, great but stinky. Yes, thank you, Robin. It's oh, it's horrible to smell. But I think every kind of natural fertilizer is horrible to smell. Now, I am growing comfrey for the first time. I planted it last fall. We're going to see if it comes up. Um, and all I hear is that the odor made from the liquid that produ that it produces is just horrific. So I, um, I'm going to actually use it as a chop and drop 
I'm not going to make, I'm not going to steep it. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to chop it up and throw it on the beds and let it do its thing. Okay. Yeah. I think see, I think the reason seaweed is so good is um, it's got so many micronutrients in it. Oh, okay. Here's Stephen saying he side dresses his garlic and his onions with ammonium sulfate, sulfate, 21% nitrogen every two weeks. Awesome. Uh, okay, I don't know what that means. Can you just dry out seaweed from the beach? I imagine, or you could just put it right on your bed. I just feel like, um, I think, I mean, it's, it's good for you. I would imagine it'd be really good for your plants. So, yeah, I don't even know if you'd need to dry it out. I would just throw it on wet. But sure, I, I'm sure drying in the sun is the same. Um, Oh, no, seeing a few people that are saying yes to that. Um, okay, so how is everybody's summer stuff coming along? Um, I still have about, about a month before I can get my tomatoes and peppers out. And... Next pot up is going to be into almost a half gallon pot because they're getting so big, but I'm not putting them out early. I'm going to hold them till the weather is nice and warm because I think they will do so much better. Uh, okay. All right, so so again, I think this is our, we're at the crunch point right now, right? Which is exciting, and yet um, it's a little, it's, I won't say stressful because that's an overstatement, but you do want to get everything out as nicely as you can. Um, this is uh, Let's Grow Home. I've only just sown brassicas but still need to do my squash and pumpkins. I have not even done any courgettes yet. Well, this year, I'm just going to, I'm just going to direct. sow all of those, I am not going to, I'm not going to start them inside because I'm going to have, cause those can go out just a mish earlier than my peppers can go out and they're taking up so much space right now. I thought, you know what, I'm just, I'm just going to plant them directly. Going to, I'm going to put a cover over them so that none of the squirrels, none of the birds, all those, na I won't say nasty little things, but all those little things that think I planted those for them. Um, they're going to be very disappointed because they won't be able to get into them. Uh, Pauline has sown cucumbers and courgettes today uh lovely all right we have such a short growing season in scotland we start inside first so we can plan out after last frost mid-may i understand uh, lately, our our growing season seems to be increasing, which I think, thank you, global climate change, whatever. Uh, so I'm not sure if that's good or bad. Um, but I think this year I'm not, because I would normally start those like right now. Uh, I just don't have the room. So I think, because I need to plant, I, I'm more interested in planting zinnias this year inside to get those 
so they can I can plant them as a plant uh, because I know that pumpkins and melons and once they get going at least here because we have such hot summers those grow like the wind uh so are, are any of you doing any of these sew along or plant along competition things that are going on i know of a sweet abega one uh a colette one and Oh, the parsnip one, potty mouth. <laughs> I should know that one. Um, yeah, I wonder if any of you are entering. I'm trying to enter all of them. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I I sometimes have a little bit more. Uh, I'm more ambitious than uh, I should be. How's the succession sewing going? Thank you for asking. That is going wonderfully i have my third succession planted we got some of our the first succession planted today some of the second succession planted today and i was thinking next week i'll have to check my calendar i think next week is my fourth that needs to start going in so uh yeah i'm sticking to it and I think I'm hoping it's going to be, I think it's going to be kind of garden changing for me. Uh, and it's nice that, cause you're only dealing with like one flat that once all this other stuff gets out, there'll be one flat that I have to deal with. So we have several people doing the uh, parsnips. Oh, you're a very good rule follower, Mel. I'm growing some parsnip without chitting as per the rules. Well, I say start some without and then start some with. They don't all have to be in and you know, in the competition, quite honestly, there's no first prize. It's just we want to grow nice parsnips, right? Uh, because I think I'm gonna plant start mine next week. Um and I've got rutabaga started inside because there was no rules on whether or not it had to be and uh see and i don't call chitting cheating but you know but i know that was kind of said in the, during the thing um yeah i don't i don't start my beans inside either i used to but they they come up so quickly for me um, so I'm going to put those, I'm doing the single seed challenge. Okay. There are a few of those floating around, uh, parsnips. Okay. Uh, well, you know, sometimes, uh, I didn't think there were any rules on how they started. I was told this by my my aunt on my wedding day, which was a few years ago. And she told me, Audrey, just remember, it's easier to ask forgiveness than permission. Uh, to which I said, well, who am I asking permission of? But anyway, that was another story. Uh, so I would say, then don't worry about it. And you start them the way you want to start them. Uh, yeah, I think I think Steve was a little strong in that. I don't know that uh, I would have said that, but I'm you know I'm gonna I'm gonna start them the way it works for me, whether I um, you know yeah. So I would just say, don't worry about that. Uh, I think the rules are Stephen that you have to just plant them in the ground. That's it no tubes no uh other things and i think chitting was i don't know if that was considered that was not not supposed to be part of it but i still i if nothing else i may chit them just to make sure they're going to grow and i may chit them and you know we got to do what we got to do we're, we're also 
I mean, here's the goal of these, all these contests is to get a nice harvest. So uh, I'm, I think I'll be more concerned about my harvest than I will about, did I chit or didn't I chit? Uh, and if I chit, I'll let them know I chitted. So if I'm disqualified, I'll be disqualified, but that's okay. Uh, oh, and Mel is saying Steve put it in the parsnip on Discord. So if you're part of the Discord, uh, yeah, see, I, I don't know, Jace. You know, is it a single seed or do you get to pick one? Unclear. I think it's everybody sows as many as they want. And then I, I don't know if it's based on weight. I don't know if it's based on length. Diameter, I have no idea. I'm just, I'm just the messenger. <laughs> so maybe there's more specific rules uh, on the Discord. I have not looked. Uh, but for but for the Swede and the Colettes, I'm just growing them the way I would always grow those. And either it's accepted or it's not because those are a couple things that I just really like having a nice harvest of. So <laughs> oh, okay. That, that was, anyway. Okay, so hey, it's been an hour. That went really fast. Uh, that went really fast today. So um, next week will either be flowers or irrigation or, I don't know, maybe something else. But I guess if you're going to do irrigation, probably should happen soon. Um, I actually am reviewing a product it's a timer that goes on your water spout or goes on i want to try it on a rain barrel because i feel like that's a sustainable way to water and i feel like for irrigation that would be like really ideal so i'm going to test it on a water on a water barrel our rain barrel is, it, it, excuse me, on a rain barrel and on like the public hose bib and see what works out. So, hey, this was great fun. I hope we all have a great week. I hope our, our gardens are blessed with some rainwater. Uh, but, you know, remember this is fun and even when it feels like, oh my gosh, I'm behind. You're not behind. It's okay. It'll catch up. Or we will just pry that produce uh, at a nice uh, farmer's market or something, right? Uh, oh, Mama's Oasis, one last question. Uh, boom, boom, boom. When will we hear more about your teas you're planting? Well, I'm going to do a video on that because... Uh, I've got them, I think I've got them all now sewn. Uh, so we're just letting them kind of grow up a little bit and then plant them out in one of my green stalks. So I'm very excited about my tea garden this year. That's a, that's a new thing for me, but I find myself drinking tea more as I get older because I can still sleep a little bit. So anyway, thank you all. Thank you so much for being here again. Great week. We will see you next week. And I will let you know what we're going to be talking about. I think that's helpful. And if you have any ideas, uh, always feel free. Always feel free to email me, uh, leave a comment, do whatever, and I'll be happy to get that slotted for us. Okay. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye now.